friends, so today you're going to be learning how to make a freezer paper stencil to use fabric paint and get an effect that is very similar to screen printing. Alright, so I've started drawing out my design a little bit, um, but before you get to drawing your design, there's something you're going to need to check to make sure you're drawing on the right side of the paper. So with freezer paper, we've got this top surface that is kind of um, got the texture of paper and then the other side of it has this kind of waxy texture. You really need to make sure you're not drawing on the waxy texture um, because this is what we're going to be adhering to our fabric later on and we just want to make sure from the very beginning that we're really clear about which side is going to be adhering the fabric that way um, we don't make that mistake later on. So I have started drawing on my top side, the more paper-like surface of the freezer paper. And I want to show you a little bit about things to be thinking about during your stencil design. Um, so this is kind of a one and done screen print. There's other fibers techniques where you can make a screen and you can use it multiple times. But this is a really simple way to do screen printing. Um, you may not be able to use this design more than once, but it's super simple and straightforward um, and I feel like it could be accessible for any classroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about what I'd like to cut out. So I've started with these triangles. I know that this is going to be a space where I'm putting paint in. You do not need to color in all the spaces in your drawing um, where you're going to be cutting out. I'm just kind of showing you a few different parts of the stencil making. So I know that I'm going to be having paint in these little triangles. Um, that's going to be a place I'm going to be cutting out. Um, another thing to think about uh, is how things are connected. So I've got this little white space kind of over here around these triangles that is going to be still connected to my freezer paper. So that's what's going to be like a stencil where I can just kind of lift it up, put it down, and it'll be put on my surface. But for example, this triangle in the center, I'm going to be wanting to put paint in here. And this triangle here, this is still going to be a stencil. I'm not going to be painting on this, but I am going to be painting inside of this. So because this isn't connected to this kind of larger chunk of freezer paper, this triangle is going to be cut out um, because I need to cut this part out to get paint in here, right? So what I'm going to have to do later on is kind of place that inside. So right now what I'm doing while I'm drawing is I'm thinking about what is connected to the stencil, how to cut it out, um, how to make it easier for myself if there's a way that you don't have to make every part of your stencil where you're going to have to um, place it on the fabric later on by hand, that's an easier way to go. Um, again, that will be shown later on with the um, ironing process. You'll get to see kind of what that looks like before you start doing your design. Uh, but usually I like to do only one or two at the most of placing by hand um, just because it can get a little tricky. So I'll be right back after I cut this out. Um, I do want to mention that you're going to need to be on a, I'm on a cutting mat and you're going to use an X-Acto knife and um, making sure you're on a cut, cutting mat is a great way to save your table from getting um, X-Acto marks in it. And it's just like any other time um, where I'm using my exacto to cut something out. I'm going to follow the line of my design. And now that I've thought about what's going to be negative space, I'm just going to keep that in mind as I'm cutting. So I know I need to cut this out and preserve this shape. And I need this space cut out in the center. So I know that I want paint in there. So I'm going to cut this out. So that can be part of my design. So this freezer paper will protect the, it from getting paint there. I'll only get paint in this little hole. And anywhere else I'd like paint, I'm going to cut out with my X-Acto knife. Um, do be careful with making kind of precise marks with this because 
this is not something um, where you can erase. If you kind of slip up with your X-Acto knife and you cut through part of your design that you didn't want cut through, um, you might have to start over. Luckily, this is pretty simple to draw and cut, um, but if you are doing a complex design, you're going to want to be careful during this part to make sure you are do cutting out the parts you want to cut out rather than the parts you wanted left white. So those are some things to look for while you're cutting your design. I'll get back to you with ad adhering this to the fabric surface. All right, so um, we're about to iron on our stencil onto my fabric. Um, I cut down my stencil from that huge sheet it was before um, because I really only need my paint blocked off from there and I wanted to cut a piece of fabric that was an accurate size to my stencil um, without having my stencil hanging off. Um, so just be sure to cut down your stencil to a realistic size for your piece. I still have plenty of room for embroidery if I want to add that later on over here. Um, so that's an option to think about as well if you will need a larger piece, if you have some other plans for how you're going to embroider on top of your fabric paint, um, be thinking about that as well. Um, we have our cotton that I cut um, on a towel, and the reason why I put it on this towel is because I need a soft surface to um, imitate an ironing board to iron on my design on top of. Also, um, if my iron's very hot, I don't want it to affect the um, surface underneath my cotton. If I have a table with like plastic on it or something like that, um, it's just better to have um, something to absorb that heat that won't be damaged. So I'm placing my stencil. I've made sure to put the waxy side down um, because that wax is going to be heated by the iron and that's what's going to attach my stencil. So I've got that first part of my stencil that I'm going to attach. Um, I will be putting in this by hand, but what I like to do is I like to start with this larger piece and then put in the hand pieces. Um, that way I can just be careful with my iron when that happens instead of trying to hold a bunch of things down. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I've got my iron on the cotton setting. Um, you need to make sure that you've got your iron on the cotton setting um, because I'm working with cotton and um, I don't want to damage my fabric with another iron setting. So um, I've got this placed. I've made sure that there's no wrinkles in my design. Um, I've made sure that I have it placed the way I'd like it and I'm ready to iron it. So um, I'm going to place down my iron flat and I'm just going to try to glide this along um, without getting any bumps. So you may have seen how um, it's possible to get some ridges or some kinks um, because when you start pressing this side kind of starts to come up a little bit and if that happens you can just kind of lift your iron up and re-flatten it. Um, so now what I need to check for now that I've, um, so did you see what I did there? I kind of put this down. Let's keep it up so I don't burn things. Um, so what I need to check for now that I've done my initial ironing real quick, um, I'm going to come through and kind of start lifting this and I'm going to look for any corners that are lifting up. So I've got a corner here that's looking a little suspicious. I can kind of see underneath it a little bit. So to me that means I need to go back in with my iron and make sure that corner is secure because this freezer paper is what's keeping me kind of like masking tape having a clean line. So I need to make sure that in these smaller pieces especially things will try to be lifted um, that I just kind of go through with the corner of my iron and make sure that that wax has adhered to the surface in any places that when I kind of lifted it up, the freezer paper started to lift up from the fabric. So I'm double checking that 
I used my eye and then I went over those places that I saw. So now I'm going to hand register um, the second part of my design. I would like my triangle to be here. Um, maybe you want to get creative and start playing around with a different way you could do your design. Um, this could be cool. You know, maybe there's a different idea you have once you have it cut out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place it by hand. And then just like before, I'm just going to be really careful because I don't have a large surface kind of keeping it from moving around. So I just kind of put it on top and iron. So we're good. We've got it ironed on the surface. Oh, look, I've got a little corner showing. So same thing. I've got a corner lifting up on this piece. Looks like I've got an edge that's lifting up over here. So I'm going to double check for that again. And then I'm going to just lightly go back over those pieces of my design that we're lifting up. Also be sure to check inside of any smaller pieces of those designs. So I am ready to fabric paint. All right, so I've started applying my paint to um, my fabric design. I went ahead and took out my colors on this plate and made sure to get as much as I needed. Um, I mixed a color before I started applying it and then I did some mixing on my surface. So I did a gradient and I started with this magenta at the top, went from the top straight with magenta and then I started taking some white and some magenta on my brush at the same time and applied that and I just kept adding more white to my brush and applying that. So something to look for while you're painting is that you can't see the um, fabric through the design. It's going to dry as, op as opaque or as transparent as it looks. So if I'd like this to be super magenta, I might need to go back through with some more of that color and put a little bit more paint on. So just make sure that your um, paint is as thick as you'd like it. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll show you how to peel it off. All right, so it looks like our fabric paint has dried and we are ready to peel it. So I'll just start from one corner and you don't need to be super careful with your um, freezer paper anymore. You can just kind of tear it off of there. Looks like I had a little bleed through over here. I could have been a little bit more careful with either applying my paint or with um, ironing it. But for the most part, you're going to get a really clean design. Like we got some really nice lines on our triangle. And now I just need to get the center section out. Awesome. So that is our finish. If this is a piece you'd like to wash, um, maybe you did your fabric stencil on a t-shirt. Um, or you just like it to be uh, more adhered to the surface. After it's dried, you can take another piece of cotton and put that cotton on top of your design. And again, you're going to want to put that towel underneath to give yourself a nice smooth surface. That's not going to burn anything. And um, you're going to iron on top of that other piece of cloth to um, just make sure that this is fully adhered um, and solidified in the fibers and you'll be good.